The Chicago Bears have made a bunch of moves this offseason. Question on the table is, have the Chicago Bears done enough this offseason to improve the team? We'll talk about all that more in today's episode of the Windy City Breeze Sports Talk Daily. Let's go. Now, if you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. It's the only channel talking Chicago sports, how Chicago talks. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. So Bears have done a ton this offseason, right? I mean, we, we could talk about the trade. I mean, and we will talk about everything basically leading up to this, right? But we can talk about the trade that is moving the first round pick. We can talk about how they've made additions on the offense and defensive side, how they've let some pieces that we viewed as key pieces to this team go. And the question on the table that remains, have the bears done enough? Is this going to be enough for the bears to improve next off season? And I want to be sure that we're making sure of, of the distinction that we're talking about here, right? Like we're talking about, okay, is this enough to take the bears from a three win team to say a seven to eight win team, right? Like this is not the video that say, Hey, is this enough to take the Chicago bears from a three win team to a super bowl team? You're a moron. You know what I mean? Like I, I get, I get sick of hearing like, Oh, this is the one this signing is great. This is a long-term super bowl. It's not right now. Right? Like we got a, we got a lot of one year deals coming in on this one. Right? But the question is, right? Is this enough to improve the Chicago bears to get the Chicago bears to the next step in their process? And I do want to break this down into three different things, right? We'll break it down into the trade that goes into the offensive side and then the defensive side as well. Uh, I think when you start off this offseason, everything focused on the first round pick being moved. When the Chicago Bears go into this offseason, right, you know you have the first pick in the draft. You know that you have all the capital. You have all the leverage. You have everything on your side. And the real question is, did the Bears make the right move by moving that first round pick? Or was that the best trade value that they could have gotten? Again, a first this year, a second this year, a first next year, a second next year, and DJ Moore. And I think when you, when you look at... Everything that the Chicago Bears got in that deal, when you look at how the Bears basically have set themselves up in a position with a interesting Carolina team, right? That to me, at the end of the day, I think you gave yourself options not only right like you you had to set yourself up to say okay we have to give Justin Fields an opportunity to have a wide receiver that's going to be out there that you're going to be able to throw the ball to we have to uh, uh be able to set ourselves up with a team that is going to actually be able to help Justin in a lot of these moments that we saw last year that okay hey while this guy made plays that maybe didn't end up working out for the Chicago Bears, right? That that you know he's he's trying to go down the field and win games. He's trying to go down the field and and uh, um, you know get the ball to receivers to keep drives alive and different things like that. We got to see if he has somebody that catches those balls in those situation. Do we come out with wins in those games? A lot of one score wins last year. Well, I'm sorry. A lot of one score losses last year. A lot of losses that on paper um, you look at it the, on the other side and you say, okay, I can see how the Bears could have won this in this moment, but the wide receiver either dropped the ball or he got stripped with a fumble or, you know, something crazy happened. And it's not to say those things won't happen this season. It's football, right? But you have to give the Bear, you have to give Justin Fields every single opportunity to me to go out here and be able to make some plays. Now, the reason I said that this leads into the offensive side, right? Because I love the trade for uh, that they made for the first round pick. I feel like you put yourself, like I said, in a good position this year, while also, before I get into the offense, putting yourself in a good position next year, right? Because you'll have that high draft pick where, hey, no, Justin Fields is the real deal. Uh, and Carolina probably is still going to suck. I, I, it's always tough to predict that, that with teams like that, right? Because that entire NFC South is a terrible division. I mean, a terrible division. So, like, they legitimately could suck next year, and you could end up with a top 
10 pick and feel like, okay, we got enough here, but we can go get Marvin Harrison Jr. This is the move, right? Like now we're getting Justin Fields, his weapons and all that. But they might still make the playoffs because that division is bad. Like five wins might get you into the playoffs over there. Like I'm not, I'm not even like it's not even an exaggeration. It feels like how the Giants were with the Cowboys a couple of years ago over there. So you also have to take that into account. It could bite us in the butt. But I feel like the Bears are going to be in a position where they can go out and get a top player next year. And on top of that, right? Even if you feel nervous, right? You go into this offseason and say Justin Fields might not be the answer. We've tried to give him a couple of things to put in front of him, uh, and he and he hasn't been able to take that next step that we'd hoped he'd take as a passer then you've put yourself in a position where hey maybe we can move up again go get our quarterback of the future go get Ryan Poles' guy right because Justin Fields right now again is still Ryan Pace's guy we have a belief in Justin Fields we have a belief in Ryan Poles but Ryan Poles is still uh Justin Fields is still Ryan Pace's quarterback and usually you're allowed to pick one to two quarterback usually two quarterbacks we being honest but one to two quarterbacks he's hitched his wagon to Justin Fields in this first couple of years hopefully that does pan out for us in the long run I think that it will now here's where this comes in as well though have the Chicago and I do want to know how you guys feel man let me know how you guys feel in the trade in the comments below I'll be down there talking with you as well uh do you think that the trade was a good move do you like the the compensation the Bears got back in the trade was it enough to set us in the right direction moving forward let me know in the comments below as well the other thing right is now okay Let's look at the offense, the offensive side of the football. The offensive side of the football last year was a joke. I think that your wide receiver room has a lot of opportunity here. I have said on multiple occasions that I believe that they have the best if wide receiver room in the NFC North, right? And what I mean by that is uh, if Chase Claypool catches the ball and if DJ Moore pans out and if Darnell Mooney comes back the same player from an ACL injury right and if Cole Komet continues to ascend (laughs) we could be talking about one of the best wide receiving room or the best receiving rooms as a whole in the NFL at least in the NFC but there's a lot of ifs on paper there right so uh some of those ifs more than likely will not pan out uh but hopefully they all do hopefully right everything clicks at the right time justin fields gets these guys on the right page everybody comes in everybody's healthy boom 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 we're killing the game so now we focus our our attention to the, the same thing that we focused on last season the offensive line have the chicago bears done enough at the offensive line and the simple answer to me is no uh nate davis like him I I think he probably slates in as our left guard next season. Um, Could be a chance where Cody White here um, ends up being our center. So I I don't know. I thought Cody White here wouldn't be on the roster at this point. And it looks like he's probably going to be a part of this team moving forward. I'm not mad at it, right? Like I I love what Cody White here has been for this team. He just hasn't been healthy. Um, But I think you also can't just roll the dice with Lucas Patrick either, right? So you have to, you have to kind of go out there and, and uh, play this game where your best five are on the field. And so Nate Davis, to me, I think he slates in at your left guard. Could see him get some time at right guard maybe, but I wouldn't mess with Tevin there. If you're going to get anything out of Tevin, I think we saw the best out of him at right guard. So hopefully he'll be able to kind of just grow into that and stay healthy in that role as well. Uh, But even with that, right, like that's still an offensive line that gave up 55 sacks. Now, again, a version of it, right? Like a version of it where it's not the exact same offensive line. It's not um, that the Chicago Bears are trotting the same guys out there that they did for most of the season last year, right? Like you also have to take into account a lot of those guys went down with injury. A lot of those big bodies up front, right, just, just weren't able to hold up. Now, I've been one to say. That happens when you have bigger guys on the offensive line or just offensive linemen in general, but bigger guys that start to get hurt. Usually they don't stop getting hurt after that. And so you kind of have to just, you have to toe that line. I thought the bears would have done more in free agency on the offensive line, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, on the offensive side of the ball, outside of that, right. You're talking about Nate Davis. You're talking about bringing in PJ Walker. I like PJ Walker. I think he fits our scheme. He's our backup quarterback. He's something that you do need, but with how you built your offensive line, he seems like he's something you might expect to use this season um, because you haven't really made any additions to it. You're probably going to add in the draft. I think there's a couple of names out there that the bear that bears fans like that. I like uh, in the draft, right? Like I look at them and I say, okay, here's, here's some guys, right? My draft wise draft breakdown. I really feel like this guy could be a really solid piece for us. And so, 
uh, but that's that's long term play, right? And so you're going into next season saying, "Hey, Braxton Jones, we know you're only in year two. We think that you played really solid next year. You're going to be our starting left tackle for this team." I didn't want to come into the season doing that. I wanted to come into the season paying your all pro player. I was somebody who was going name over maybe scheme fit when it came to paying Orlando Brown Jr. It seems like the Chicago Bears are really big on going with the scheme fit. I'm not mad at that. It's just a longer process and a process that I don't know if you have the time for Justin Fields to develop in, right? So you're putting a lot of weight on the shoulders of Braxton Jones here. Uh, Nate Davis, to me, solid piece. Going to be a solid piece on that left side. Hopefully a veteran piece that's able to help out Braxton Jones in a lot of those situations. You also have to remember, Braxton Jones' struggles a lot of times came from Cody White here not being there on his right side, being that veteran that can stand in there and, and kind of, you know, help him out when he got into his struggles and different things like that on the inside. Outside-wise, listen, you're on your own. You're left tackle. Got to make the right play. Got to got to be ready to go. Uh, he had some tough matchups last year. He's going to have some tough matchups this year. So, uh, like I said, interesting move. The other move offensively I do like, though, and and there's a couple of moves here. Dante for or I got to get it right. And, and I know everybody being in the, in the comments on this is how you say his name. This is how you say his name. I, I have literally scoured the Internet on how to say these mugs names because I want to be getting them right. I have heard Deontay every time. Deontay Foreman. Now, listen, this could be a bunch of, you know, white reporters that are like, what's the apostrophe with the D and the O-N-T? Yeah, I know how it goes, right? I know how it goes. We, we be spelling names sometimes. But um, Deontay Foreman and, and capital O, uh, I, I really think was an underrated signing for the Chicago Bears. You get him in here at $3 million. You're saving a lot of money. You got Travis Homer, who, I mean, Travis Homer, right? And, and understand this. Everybody's like, if Travis Homer's out there, that means that we know that it's going to be a passing down. Travis Homer's probably going to be out there a lot more than y'all think. You'll probably see a little bit of twin running back, uh, uh, in the twin running backs in the backfield so that it's not just every time we see these, this dude, we know it's a passing down. They're not just going to sit there there and throw Travis Homer out there every time that it's a passing down and say go out there and blocks and now they know it like they they get scheme right like come on guys like let's, let's be smarter than this um but I like the addition of those two uh to me I, I feel like uh you know you're getting them basically for a million dollars less than what David Montgomery got up in Detroit and you're still getting really good production out of Deontay Foreman as a runner you do still have Khalil Herbert on the roster as well I think he is your number one back Deontay Foreman probably your number two back so you're adding some depth to that running back room you also add in Robert Tunyon I love I love the signing of Robert Tunyon because the Chicago Bears might actually run twin tight ends I believe that's going to be the plan here and I think that not only does that add an addition to your blocking scheme but now you have two big boys for Justin Fields to throw the football to in tough situations that can go out there and make catches right like and and that's to me the biggest takeaway from this, right? You're go, you got guys out there that literally can go out there. Boom. Hey, I, I, I'm just going to be big over the middle. I'm going to come down with this, especially in your red zone situations. That gets me excited. But again, is that enough? Did the Chicago Bears do enough? To me on the offensive line, I don't believe they did. I would have swung big, personally. I would have. I like the weapons that you've got in Justin Fields. I love the fact that you went out and got DJ Moore. You already had Chase Claypool here. You've already got David or uh, 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 um Darnell Mooney here, right? Hopefully he's able to come back and be 110%. He's probably going to be Justin Fields' best guy because they've got that rapport built up. Uh, and so him, DJ Moore, kind of going to get a ton of opportunity in this offense. And then I look at... Um, really just kind of how the Chicago Bears can go out here and, and attack with uh, uh, the mixture of run and pass now, instead of just saying, hey, they got to run the football. Like, what, they're, they're trying to pass, right? They're, Justin Fields legit last year was trying to pass. Nobody was catching footballs. <laughs> so now you can have that nice mixture of run and pass. I feel like, I like what they've done on the offensive side of the football. I don't love what they've done on the offensive side of the football. And I think that more needed to be done there. I don't think that we've paid enough attention to the trenches, but also, right. I'm also understanding that Ryan Poles is going scheme fit over name. When you go scheme fit over name, you have to have those guys that fit your scheme. And I don't think that there were a ton of guys out there that fit the scheme that that zone, uh, uh, blocking scheme that the bears do. There weren't a ton of guys out there that fit 
with that that were worth overpaying for in my opinion there just weren't right like i, I interestingly enough McGlinchey might have been an interesting one just because of the scheme fit and i think that's why the bears went a conversation with him but i also believe that um McGlinchey was one that he he made he made a lot of money. McGlinchey made a lot of money. Yeah, I'm okay with the Bears not resigning him. Hey, I want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know how do you feel the Bears did offensively with some of these moves, man. I'll be down in the comments talking with you as well. Uh, how do you feel the Bears improved offensively? Do you feel like the Bears improved offensively? I do feel like the Bears got better offensively. I just feel like, right, like not in the spots that I would have focused in on personally, me, right? But hey, I'm not a GM, so... Uh, <laughs> Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. Uh, the other thing that we have to talk about, of course, got to talk about the defensive side of football. Listen, this is the Bears bread and butter for every single season. And last year, your discrepancy between sacks allowed versus sacks gained, I believe was 37. I believe the Bears gave up. 55 sacks and or no is it 57 something like that 55 or 57 sacks and allowed something like or actually got like 22 whatever it is you know y'all know how math, math don't be math for me but the fact is it was plus 30 in the sacks that you got on other teams versus sacks allowed. That's insane. It's one of the worst that I've ever seen in my life. The Bears defense created no pressure on literally some of the worst offensive lines in football where we went into weeks and we were like, hey, this offensive line is not good. We should be able to beat this offensive. Oh, wow. We can't get any pressure. Um, you Basically, once you got rid of Roquan and Jack Sanborn went down, had no linebacker depth. Um, you basically went into the season saying, Hey, we got these DBs and we got these DBs and we got these DBs. And <laughs> I don't feel like coming out of free agency. That's all we have to hang our hat on now on the defensive end of the defensive side of the football, right? Big contract to Tremaine Edmonds. I've talked about it kind of how I feel about Tremaine Edmonds. I like Tremaine Edmonds. I really like Tremaine Edmonds. I think that he's going to be a dog in this off in this defense. I think he's going to be flying around the field. He's going to be one of those players that we talk about that um, at the end of the contract, it's going to be a great value contract. And you add that by adding in TJ Edwards. I really like what the Bears did with their linebacker room in free agency. But that's not the focus. And again, I look at the trenches. To me, that's not your focus. The reason that's not your focus is those guys that we talk about being dogs had dogs up front. Those guys that we talk about being monsters had monsters up front, right? Tremaine Edmonds in that Buffalo defense really liked what he was going to be able to do, or really liked what he was able to do, really liked how he was able to fly around in coverage, be able to knock the football around, be, be able to attack. Right? I loved what Tremaine Edmonds could do. But I also understand that the defensive line in front of him was dominant. <laughs> it was one of the best, literally, in football. And you come into a situation here, right, where you sign Tremaine Edmonds. I love that. He's going to be held to that standard in Buffalo. And I'll tell you what, you don't got Buffalo guys standing in front of him. Now, you did address your offensive line. I think you went out and got you a couple of nice rotational pieces. To me, Demarcus Walker probably ends up starting right now. He was a guy you signed as well, three years, 21 million. I like him, right? I, I think that he's going to be a nice piece. He's going to be a starter. He's going to be a solid piece for you. He is not a star. He's not a guy that I look at, right? And I say, yeah, he's going to be in the backfield every single play. Now, he can create a ton of pressure. But again, Demarcus Walker coming from a defensive line that allowed him to create that pressure because of other names on that line. Being the guy changes a lot. So you hope that he's going to be able to come in to this defense. And I said offensive line on the defensive line. You hope that he's going to be able to come into this defensive line and be able to give you that same production. Career highs all the way across the board. QB pressure, sacks, all of that. I hope that he's going to be able to give us that production again, but 
you also have to have guys standing next to him. And the other move that you made is Andrew Billings. Now, of course, you're going to go young. The Bears are going to go young. Ryan Poles has told us he's going to build through the draft. But to me, right, I would have loved to see the Bears go out and get one of those big guys coming through the middle. That is your scheme fit, right? Unless you feel like you're still going to take Jalen Carter. Talent trumps all. I've told you all this in the NFL. I know it sounds crazy. I know it's tough to say. I know that a lot of people don't like that opinion on football, but just watch football. There's a lot of bad dudes on the field. I don't think Jalen Carter's a bad dude. I think that he's a dumb kid. I think that he's immature at times based on some of the stuff that's not only coming out now, but that continues to come out and that has been talked about with him in previous times. Right. But again, you're going very, very young in this draft. Unless you feel like you're going out there to get Aaron Donald coming through the middle at the top of this draft, you haven't done enough on that defensive line. Now, this defense as a whole, will it be better? Yeah, it will. 100%. Your coverage is going to be really nice. I like Jalen Johnson uh, uh, being paired up with uh, 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 Kyler Gordon. And now this linebacker crew of Jack Sanborn, TJ Edwards, and Tremaine Edmonds. A couple of guys, right? A couple of guys. Jack Sanborn, TJ Edwards, to me, a couple of guys. I think TJ Edwards ends up being your middle linebacker. And then Tremaine Edmonds, your main guy, right? Jack Sanborn, a really intelligent player on your Sam side. I love that. I love what our linebacker room looks like now. I think that now you also, but, but at the end of the day, I'm also not naive enough to think that, hey, yeah, these guys are going to be able to cover for six seven seconds you still have to be able to get to the quarterback i hope that the bears can go out in the draft and find somebody that's going to be able to create pressure maybe continuing in free agency and be able to find somebody that's going to create pressure but uh i mean like uh, I don't know any names out there, right, of the available players left. I mean, you could bring back an al Qadiq Muhammad. He didn't do too much for you. Um, you know, I, there's, not, there's not much out there. There's not a ton out there, you know what I mean, on players that I'm really, really looking at that are going to be able to just wreak havoc for you. I think those players are gone. I thought a Javon Hargraves would have been a really nice player for the Bears to go out and get. I thought he was going to be their big money get, and I really felt good about them going out and get him. They didn't go out and get him. Tremaine Evans is a great get, right? But again, where's that pressure start from? I can put... I can put less talented players behind guys if there are guys getting to the quarterback. So hopefully the Bears are able to uh, bounce back on this one, man. Hopefully, or not bounce back. Hopefully the Bears are able to show us kind of uh, that there's more in the tank here. That And we knew they were going to go young. Hopefully them going young is going to benefit them moving forward. Uh, we'll see kind of how that all works out. As always, um, this is going to be a process. And it is not going to be a quick process. So hopefully the Chicago Bears are able to come away with this and feel like, hey, yes, we did get better. Hey, yes, we do have a team that is in position to go out there and win seven to nine games. That's all you can do as a GM. You can only put your team in the position to go out there to win that certain amount of games. You can't go out there and win the games for them. The players have to do it. The coaches have to do it. There's going to be the blame game thing that always comes in, right? Um, but I think that your jump shouldn't be from three to five in this case because of the acquisition of DJ Moore. I think the Bears will win a lot more, and I think because it'll be more of a focus on the offensive side of the football um that you can get a you can compete in a lot more games that maybe you weren't in last year if you're able to make those passes but again that also depends on the offensive line you have in front of Justin it also depends on what Justin Fields is comfortable with doing he's also got to be able to stand in there if they're giving him a good pocket and make that pass throw that dot put the ball on DJ Moore put the ball on uh, uh um uh, uh, Darnell Mooney, put the ball on Chase Claypool, Cole Komet, Robert Tunyon, right? Like if you got names in your offense now, you do. And I'm not talking about scrubs, right? Like we went from Byron Pringle to DJ Moore, not bad. Uh, you know, Nikhil Harry to Chase Claypool, not bad. We're doing all right out here. So, but you also have to be able to stand in there and deliver that football to him. So hopefully the Bears are able to do that. I think that we will be in a pretty good position moving forward. I do want to know how you guys feel though, man. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you as well. As always, it's your boy Pat the designer. Back at it again. Do you think the Chicago Bears got better this offseason? Let me know. I'll be down there, man. Uh, as always, to continue watching our Chicago Bears content, click the links on the screen or check the links in the description below. Hey, yo, Chicago! Y'all stay safe out there, man. Peace.